Khalistani sympathizers appeasement plot foiled. India-Canada diplomatic ties hit rock bottom. All eyes on the Five Eyes vision. From student haven has Canada turned into a terror haven. Ladies and gentlemen, after one year of allegations, after one year of supporting anti-India Khalistani terrorists and after one year of completely damaging his country's relationship with India, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, has said this. India is possibly behind Nijjar's killing. If even after a year, all that Trudeau could come up with was possibly and repetitive statements, the Canadian Prime Minister perhaps must stop with this bizarre vote bank politics of his, which has led to a complete collapse of a once healthy relationship. Hours after New Delhi slammed accusations against her High Commissioner in Canada and called out Justin Trudeau's naked interference in India's internal politics, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police claimed that Indian agents were involved in clandestinely gathering information and threatening South Asians in Canada. India has rejected these claims. When we started to understand through intelligence agencies that India was possibly, if not probably, behind Nijar's killing, the killing of a Canadian on Canadian soil last summer, our first choice, our first actions were to reach out, yes, to our Five Eyes partners, but also to the government of India to say, we know this has happened. Work with us to fix this. We don't want to be having this fight, but obviously the killing of a Canadian on Canadian soil is not something that we can ignore as a country. Over this past week, when the RCMP reached out to its law enforcement counterparts in India, there was a path where we could have worked together to ensure accountability and changes and, and you know, steps that would have resulted in keeping Canadians safe, because that is our top priority. India, the Indian government, rejected those advances, rejected our attempts to find some way through this. And that brought us to this point of having to disrupt the chain of operations that go from dip Indian diplomats here in Canada to criminal organizations to direct violent impacts on Canadians right across this country. Canada is now looking at the Five Eyes Alliance of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK and the United States to garner global support for its accusations. Justin Trudeau spoke with leaders from New Zealand and UK who said that the rule of law should be followed. All of this, remember, amid Canadian support to Khalistanis. Since 2003, India has sent 26 extradition requests to Canada on criminals from India who have taken refuge there. And this includes the extradition request for Hardeep Singh Nijjar in 2022. Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri today said that it, it, it is incomprehensible that in the name of freedom of expression, Canada put the lives of Indian diplomats in danger by allowing their photos on social media. Our responses on all these things have been exemplary. And I think they will realize when we start calibrating our response. I read the statement of the Ministry of External Affairs and it filled me with pride. They were called a spade a spade. And this process, I don't want to comment on it because the MES statement, statement speaks for itself. But listen, 
This happens everywhere. It can happen to anyone. So let's be very, very careful. If you allow uh, a person who is in the discharge of his duties to become a subject for this thing, I've seen uh, my colleagues in different places being attacked in gurdwaras, etc. I mean, that's unbelievable. All right, to talk more on this, I'm joined by the former Foreign Secretary of India, Mr. Harsh Vardhan Shringla. Mr. Shringla, good evening, Namaskar. Thank you very much for speaking with us at Mirror Now. First of all, sir, the India-Canada diplomatic ties have hit rock bottom. Your first reaction on how Justin Trudeau has handled this entire situation? Well, I think uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has definitely erred in his handling of India. It doesn't come from the events of uh, the last few days. It comes from many years ago, <clears throat> since he has been Prime Minister. I think a number of uh, steps that he's taken have been in the wrong direction. He's always seen India uh, as a sort of place from which he can derive political mileage for domestic reasons. He has a small constituency, uh, and some of whom are radical and also separatists uh, and he tends to pander to that community so right from the time that he visited uh, india in 2018 uh, things went wrong he tried to again i think uh, you know reach out to uh, a certain community in a certain way and that backfired subsequently in 2020 he was involved in blatant interference in our domestic affairs when he spoke about and spoke not once, but on more than one occasion on the farmers' protests in India, a purely domestic issue. Uh, he has also uh, relied on the support of a party whose leader is openly in favor of separatism from India. Uh, so none of this, I think, has been in uh, the interest of the relationship. It has always been looked at from his political perspective. And this, of course, uh, you know, recent incident... Uh, involving the alleged uh, killing of uh, Hardeep Singh Nijar, uh, a person who was uh, killed in Canada, but who uh, had a strong criminal antecedents and background, uh, I think uh, uh, is, is, is the last straw in the, in the series of provocations that uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his government have taken uh, against uh, the interests of the larger India-Canada relationship. Okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Stringler, now that India has withdrawn her High Commissioner and other diplomats, as well as expelled six Canadian diplomats, do you see a reversal of this decision anytime soon? Do you see some sort of headway happening diplomatically between the two countries? No, I don't think uh, that decision has been taken lightly. I don't see it being uh, reversed lightly either. Uh, I think unless uh, Canada... Uh, can very clearly um, demonstrate that it wants to put the relationship uh, before uh, its own domestic political interests, uh, this issue will not be resolved that easily. Uh, I think we are in for a, uh, a difficult period, uh, at least in the diplomatic side of things. And, uh, and I think this has to play itself out because clearly... Uh, the Canadians have taken steps that are, I, frankly speaking, very unusual in diplomatic relationships. Uh, ask, uh, defining our High Commissioner to Canada as a person of interest in an investigation, I think is very strange indeed. I mean, he's a career diplomat. He's had a long career uh, innings, including as our ambassador to Sudan, to Japan, now to Canada. And to say that he has been involved in the investigation uh, of a killing of a Canadian national is, is uh, I would say, completely preposterous, as the MEA has pointed out. You know, sir, even though diplomats do have immunity, could you explain to us what really happens in such cases where our officials are bizarrely accused on foreign soil? Yeah, so as per the Vienna Convention, uh, diplomats are immune from prosecution and from charges... Uh, of this nature, specifically because diplomats go to perform a certain uh, responsibility. They, rep they represent their country in another country. And when they go to another country, then their person is inviolate. In other words, that you cannot uh, you know, hold him responsible, charge him or arrest him or you know, prosecute him in any manner. 
And therefore, Canada's action uh, to uh, define not only our High Commissioner, but six of our diplomats as persons of interest in an investigation, I think, again, is unusual. It borders on, I would say, uh, you know, um, really uh, diplomatic, uh, uh, the fringes of diplomatic uh, norms and behavior. And I think, uh, and I think this is uh, not something that we would expect from a friendly country like Canada. Uh, this, and, and not only that, I mean, this there is no clearly no evidence to back up anything that they're talking about. Uh, I think the Ministry of External Affairs has uh, pointed out repeatedly there is not a shred of evidence that has been provided. You have to substantiate everything that you say. You have a prime minister of a country going to parliament and talking about a potential involvement in an investigation of uh, Indian officials. But uh, again, you have no evidence. You now have a, a commission of inquiry that's been set up. And at that time, you sort start accusing our high commissioner and senior uh, diplomatic personnel of our mission uh, of being involved in a manner that, in a matter that is, uh, frankly speaking, uh, you know, uh, without any uh, uh, any evidence to back it up. So you have an, a murder of an individual and you feel that the High Commissioner of India is involved in that in some way. Uh, to even mention that, as I said, is, is, is highly diplomatically, um, you know, incorrect and uh, unusual for any country to do that. Uh, and we have constantly maintained that we give us evidence, tell us what it's all about, and then we can look at this. But you haven't given, it, given us what it is. You simply raised the uh, levels of this particular, let's say, uh, situation uh, to a point where you post to take actions which are not in the interests of the relationship uh, between our two countries. You know, sir, a big concern right now is for Indian students in Canada. How would this situation impact them? Would they be caught in this entire diplomatic tussle between India and Canada? Well, there are a very good number of Indian students. I believe some 30-40% of total foreign students in Canada are from India. They're pursuing their higher studies. They contribute to the Canadian economy. And, uh, and I think, uh, I don't think the Canadian government would, uh, in all honesty, uh, you know, impinge on the future of these students. Uh, they have nothing to do with, uh, with any of the allegations or any of the issues that are involved. Um, um, but, uh, but as I said, I mean, you know, I think the uh, Canadian government is going to ridiculous lengths and we have to see what happens uh, after this. My last question to you, Mr. Shringla. You know, Justin Trudeau, we know, supports Khalistani terrorists and sympathizers. And now, of course, he's taken this entire relationship with India uh, to a complete collapse. Is it now time for India to act against Trudeau? Well, I mean, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau, as I said, has supported separatists. We have always said that these separatists have had strong links with terrorism with organized crime, like drug smuggling, arms smuggling, human trafficking. It's in the interest of Canada to cooperate with us to bring these individuals to book so that it does not impact on their society. And by ignoring that and by sheltering this community for political reasons, I'm talking about community, I mean these uh, separatists and anti-India anti -India elements. I think uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is doing his own country a grave injustice. I mean, he has. that is where I think he has really heard that in, in trying to secure his narrow political interests, he has compromised uh, his own country's safety hmm. and security and, of course, the larger India-Canada relationship. All right, we'll leave it there. Mr. Harshwardhan Shringla, thank you very much, sir, for joining us on Global Mirror and sharing your perspective and helping us understand this situation better. Thank you very much. With that, viewers, let me also welcome my guests, uh, the other two guests on the show. I'm joined by Chris Blackburn, international affairs commentator. I'm also joined by Patikrit Payne, geopolitical analyst. Good evening, Namaskar to both of you. Welcome to Global Mirror. Chris Blackburn, let me begin with you. How do you view this entire diplomatic collapse that has happened between India and Canada, with uh, Canada claiming that they have given credible evidence against India, but India completely rejecting those claims and saying we still don't have any substantial points that Canada has given to us? 
Um, yeah, well, let me begin. Thank you for having me. Um, it, it's a, a sensational claims, I think. We, we saw the allegations of what um, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau gave in, in Parliament last year, which were massive allegations that he was effectively accusing India of being in, involved in, in the murder of Najjar, um, the, the chief of the Khalistan Tiger Force. So I think this recent sort of spat... Um, there hasn't been anything real or a breakthrough happened on the ground, so we don't know what's actually happened behind the scenes. But the the, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police mm. have basically expounded on those allegations by Trudeau and said that Indian diplomats in Canada are linked to organised crime, which is a, a, an outstanding allegation to make, but again, providing no real evidence. Um, so I think that this... this, this this spat will escalate going forward because it, the, the RCMP's statement is basically what the prosecution are now going to use against those who they've, they've arrested and charged oh. for the murder of Nijar. So I think this, this situation will get worse as it, as it goes ahead um, and we will see sort of elements of the oh. proposed evidence coming out within the court case. Yeah. Patakrit, um, you know, there have been concerns and India has reiterated them time and again with Canada, uh, with Justin Trudeau, regarding the support that Khalistani terrorists and sympathizers get on Canadian soil. Uh, but with this kind of a situation now brewing between India and Canada with such tensions and such strained ties, uh, do you see some sort of concern back home? Should we be concerned uh, back home uh, regarding the national security and probably Khalistani elements propping up here as well? Well, sure. First and foremost, let me put it this way. I mean, I see a pattern. The, the first time they started talking about this was just after the G20 summit, when which India did successfully. This time, right after the Haryana election, where uh, in the, the government in power did reasonably well. Uh, you know, there are, I, I look at it as, as something which is deliberately being done to keep the pot boiling. Um, and as we move towards the $5 trillion economy, you would see more resistance coming from many of these countries. And I see, uh, I look at it, Canada is just one part of the larger uh, puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, in which many other countries are equally involved. I mean, if you look at uh, in 2022, there are almost 880 instances of homicide in Canada. In 2023, 778 instances. Why do you think uh, they are just interested in the murder or death, un unfortunate death of one person? I mean, why is it that Five Eyes Intelligence is involved? Uh, we have seen a series of efforts in this country for hmm. regime change. We have seen alleged interference of other countries in the election of India in 2024. Uh, and we have seen many instances of in, in India where there has been, you know, attempts to create anarchy. And there have been allegations of involvement of some of the countries hmm. of the global north. Uh, so, so I'm not very surprised with what is happening. If you see at the larger context of things, I would rather say Canada right now is just front-ending a larger ploy. Look at it. United States in the last last year actually endorsed Canada's uh, you know allegations against India. United States in case of Gurpat Pan Singh Pannu, who keeps on giving wild kind of threats to India, you know keeps on turning a blind eye to what Pannu mm. says. In United Kingdom, the Indian uh, uh, you know embassy was attacked. In San Francisco, the Indian consulate was burned down. I mean, what do you think these countries are supposed to do? They expect India to protect the, their uh, diplomats, which India does. They expect India to have a, you know, unquestionable integrity when it comes to fight war, when it comes to war on terror. And we did that. But when it comes to terrorists, which are designated hmm. as terrorists yeah. in India, uh, the, the standards uh, completely change when it comes to, uh, you know, whether it's Canada or United States. So far as India is concerned, I have been saying it for quite some time. In the next three, four years, India's real challenge is not economic growth, but securing the economic growth, which means there is a strong possibility of threats to critical infrastructures. We have been witnessing the kind of uh, attacks on the railway lines that are happening. Mm. There are in elements from abroad instigating people to target the you know critical infrastructures. Mm. You have seen what happened in case of Hindenburg deliberately okay. targeting some of the Indian corporations and many other things are happening. So I think, yes, we should be very, very careful in terms of organized hmm. crime syndicates and terror groups deliberately, intentionally trying to do these okay. things. I find it very surprising, Shreya, uh, which, you know, the government of Canada is trying to link government of India with a, a organized gang of Lawrence Vishnoi. 
and if the objective is to ensure that modi government becomes unpopular then certainly it is not happening that way so i think would if if it is that trudeau is doing just for the sake of a few votes well the objective uh, because i think is to trudeau increase is the popularity it. of justin trudeau back home that is one of his main Perhaps. reasons of why he's doing what he's doing uh, but chris blackburn uh, you know let me understand from you justin trudeau has reached out to the five eyes partners how far do you think would they be willing to get involved in this entire tussle between india and canada Well, I, th I think when we look at it, um, the Khalistan issue in, in Canada has been around for years, and we know it since since the Air India one eighty two bombing in nineteen eighty five. It's been a massive issue for for can Canadian politics, and that is pretty. It's that's pretty well known ac across the sort of the Five Eyes Security Alliance. But what we've seen over the years is Khalistanis are trying to emulate their success of what happens in Canada, especially the political sort of infiltration. We're seeing that happening in in the UK, Australia, and other places. So I think other nations in Five Eyes are acutely aware. And I think before the, these sort of the, the 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 allegations by Justin Trudeau, there was a real movement by Five Eyes to work with India on the pro Khalistan extremism. Um, obviously the Brit, the former British um, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak came out and he made a statement saying we've got to take this seriously we are, we are, we're getting signs that the radicalism is growing within the diaspora and we need to take it seriously so i think the india's yeah. concerns have been sort of taken on board and we and ultimately we need to do better we the, the whole problem that canada is in is because the canadians were told that khalistani elements were being involved directly involved in terrorism and so Najjar who was the chief of a terrorist organization the Khalistan Tiger Force the Canadians knew all about that but they turned a blind eye to it and we've we've seen whistleblowers within Canada actually say oh they didn't they didn't want to tackle oh. Khalistani elements because it was seen it would it would interfere with vote bank politics in Canada and that was from a whistleblower a special advisor to Justin Trudeau so it's a it's a it's a well known problem that Canada has this this problem but i think in five eyes what we'll see is people the other nations especially in the uk where we have our own kalistan problem we will see that yes people will say hmm. canada we, there shouldn't be murders happening on canadian soil but i think a lot of people don't want to get involved in this issue it's a canadian mainly a canadian issue that has blown out of all proportion because of canada and i think them now trying to blame and bring other people hmm. into this this diplomatic spat shows a weakness on behalf of Justin Trudeau. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh this is clearly a cover up for the kind of challenges that Justin Trudeau has faced back home. Uh but Patikrit, uh, you know, many observers and analysts also uh seem to suggest that perhaps there's a lot to do with China uh and its influence in Canada as well with the kind of investment that China has done in fact earlier this year there were reports that Canadian spies had also found Chinese interference or Chinese influence in the last two elections that were held in Canada in 2019 and 2021 both of which were won by Justin Trudeau do you resonate with that do you think there could be a Chinese interference and a China hand with what is happening right now between India and Canada Well, sure. That's exactly what I was saying. That it's highly unlikely that just for the sake of a few votes, uh, Trudeau would do all these and go to this extent to, uh, you know, spoil his relation with a country like India. I mean, there are, must be some other players. Whether it is a Five Eyes intelligence grid or China, somebody is definitely working with them and using uh, Trudeau. I'm not saying Trudeau is innocent. Trudeau is deliberately, you know, involved in whatever is happening. But there's definitely some other country, whether it's China or somebody else or the Five Eyes. they're doing it and it's important for them to understand one thing the world is going through tremendous amount of turmoil and 25 2025 onwards is going to be much more worse than what it is today if for the sake of some kind of nit picking uh, you know they want to spoil relation with india uh, you know uh, then they must understand they require india as much as we do require them for a global uh, harmony and if trudeau is such a fool that he would get uh, you know pushed by china just for the sake of a few votes or the money then i think uh, canada would face consequences so far as china is concerned look china has understood beyond a point it is very difficult for them to push india when in the border e regions they know 
uh, what India can do. And if something starts in Ladakh, it would not end in Ladakh. But even if they have been doing it through Trudeau, I think they must understand it has limitations because all the allegations they're putting on India, Washington Post came out with an article making wild allegations against the Modi government. Mm. If it is on the pretext that is going to make Modi government unpopular among people, certainly it's not happening. But they must understand these things are not going to work beyond a the point. These are not going to reduce the credibility of the government. On the contrary, because the government of India has taken a strong stand on the issue of these uh, secessionist movements, I think its popularity going, is going to go up. So I think through, be it Trudeau or whether it's China or other five mm, okay. other five wise intelligence of uh, countries, they must understand that the days are over when you can just overwhelm global south countries and do whatever you want by creating a narrative and pushing it loud at the loudest possible uh, you know traction hmm. but that's okay. not going to work anymore i think india has been very nuanced and measured in its approach you don't see any rash statement coming from ministry of external affairs but if you see the public sentiment the public sentiment today in india is very much against not just trudeau but also against canada and even against the five eyes countries i reiterate the stand taken by united states on but the you know, issue Patikrit, of Panu oh, this is was no this was only until yesterday the... yeah yeah, until yesterday is when India was taking this in a very, you know, diplomatic way. And, um, uh, you know, like you said, no harsh, harsh words to Justin Trudeau. But uh, I think yesterday was the day when India put out a rather stern statement against Justin Trudeau and called out his hypocrisies, uh, understandably and justifiably. Chris Blackburn... Uh, you know, we were talking about how Justin Trudeau has completely deteriorated the ties. We've got the India-Canada trade to the tune of $7.65 billion last year. There are Indian students who study in Canada. Clearly a healthy relationship which has been uh, completely, um, you know, ruined by Justin Trudeau's actions. Uh, do you see any headway happening now? Do you see uh, any sort of resolution coming in between the two countries in the near future? Um, no, I don't. To be frank, I think the, the situation will probably actually get worse. And we saw with the statement yesterday by the Min uh, Ministry of External Affairs basically called Justin Trudeau uh, a terrorist sympathiser. Um, so I don't think they're going to get any better, especially with the with the, the trials of those that have been charged for the for the murder of Najjar. Um, I think it will it'll get pro pro progressively worse, especially as that trial goes ahead. Um, obviously, the, the other issues, yet yeah, okay. I think China's like 25th, one of the trade partners of um, like of, of India, um, and the, there's lots of uh, Commonwealth ties, you name it. Um, will those be affected? Yes, but I think ultimately it's about India standing its ground on this one. Um, uh, Canada has to give evidence, and that's something that they, that's that's been lacking for the last year. Um, but I think, as we've seen with the statement from the RCMP, it, is basically that's going to be their narrative the, for prosecutors that basically India were involved in in criminal activity um, to to take out Khalistani targets, um, and, and that's yeah. going to lead to a deterioration in the relationship. Will it bring in other nations such as the Five Eyes? We we do not know, but we do okay. know that there will be other countries like China and Pakistan who will try to make as much um, out of this as they they possibly can. Anything anything to damage India and. I think mm. and we've also seen recently that the, the, the Canadian intelligence leaders themselves have said Pakistan is also involved in getting in, involved in pro Khalistan extremism yes. in Canada. So it's a, a whole thing to unravel. Hmm. All right, we'll leave it there. Let's, how, uh, let's see how this really moves forward. Chris Blackburn and Patikrit Payne, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on Global Mirror and sharing your perspective. Thank you very much. All right, with that, viewers, it's a wrap on this broadcast. News and updates continue on Mirror now. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Bye-bye. Up next.